Hey everyone, welcome to Steven Universe Universe, the show where we talk about the universe of Steven Universe. I'm your host, Victor Frost. First things first, let's see what you crazy cats have been up to. It's time for a review. If you're old enough to have watched anime on VHS, then you probably remember when the first AMV Hell came out. If you watched AMV Hell, then this review really needs no further continuation. Either you like it or you don't. In either case, if you haven't seen AMV Hell, Hell Universe is a series of videos that takes clips from Steven Universe and combines it with clips and sound bites and music of other things to make a whole bunch of rapid fire, really funny videos. This is the essence of the AMV Hell style, and really, they pull it off great. I mean, some of the combinations are inspired. So, what's the verdict? This video gets 5 out of 5 Stevens. There'll be a link to the video, of course, but I will also put links to the AMV Hell archive in the doobly-doo for those of you who haven't seen them. You should really check them out. Some great classic anime fandom going on there. And the good kind, not the make the community hostile for outsiders kind. Yikes. Now it's time for us to look at the latest episode and see what we learned. If you haven't seen the episode Shirt Club yet, now's your chance to pause this video, go watch that one, then come back. Don't worry, we'll wait. So, new episode, new lore. Let's see what we learned. So the big overarching theme of this episode is that of empathy. Empathy is when we can share or understand the emotions or feelings of others. For example, if you see something painful happen to someone, it's your empathy that kicks in when you think, ooh, I am glad that wasn't me. Banana grab! What? <sighs> Banana grab. Empathy is such a deep and ingrained part of the human psychology that having an atypical empathetic response is associated with such mental syndromes or disorders such as autism or schizophrenia or even literal psychopathy. Not to conflate the three. Because of its fundamental nature in humanity, empathy has been part of our moral code since the times of antiquity. Most religious and philosophical schools of thoughts have some maxim relating to empathy. In Christianity, it's do unto others as you would have them do unto you, the golden rule. In the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah says, And if thine eyes are turned towards justice, chooseth for thy neighbor what thou would choose it for thyself. Basically, before you do something, ask yourself if you'd be okay if someone did that to you. In this episode, that idea is in full effect. Steven wants Buck to stop making the t-shirts because not only is it not fulfilling the purpose he originally had in mind for them, but because he finds out that the reason people are enjoying the t-shirts so much is because the drawing that he worked very hard on isn't very good, which makes him sad. But Buck denies him any consideration in the matter, and he's gonna keep making those t-shirts whether Steven likes it or not. This displays a selfish lack of empathy on Buck's part. He knows that doing this hurts Steven's feelings, but he's doing it anyway. Why? Well, we'll get to that in a bit, but first, let's look at how Steven responds to this. Rather than dusting off those conflict resolution skills, Steven opts for a more direct approach, opting to give Buck a taste of his own medicine. Still screening a whole bunch of t-shirts with the design that Buck made for his dad when he was young, a design that Buck might not necessarily want getting out, he launches them into a populated area at a populated time with the t-shirt cannon. From this, Buck gets to feel directly how he made Steven feel. So, Buck learns his lesson and apologizes. Funny moment, then star wipe to black. But let's rewind here. Why did Buck do this? I mean, from what we've seen of him, he's not a bad guy. I mean, he's not a villain. So, why? Well, that brings us to our second idea. Art for art's sake. 
Buck is without a doubt a pretty counterculture kind of guy, probably due to his life being pretty constrained by him being the mayor's son. He also has a strong bend towards the arts and cultural movements, which was probably bolstered by him having a what we would call pretty liberal education. More on that later. Now, the idea of art for art's sake boils down to the simple creation of art being the only justification art needs to exist. I personally ascribe to this because it means that any creative output need not have a rational or utilitarian justification. You can make art that may not fit within the standing social constructs of society and if anybody asks, why would you make this? You can simply say, because it could be made. This is great, but like all good ideas, its meaning can be twisted if taken too far. It can go from the harmless and beneficial idea of making art independent of the constraints of society and the people in them to the hostile and often damaging idea of making art in complete rejection of society and the people in it. The former can push the boundaries of art and reflect on supposedly sacred ideas in society. The latter can serve to alienate the artist from society, disconnecting them from the common reality, taking the meaningfulness out of their art. In Buck's case, in the pursuit of making the t-shirt as art for art's sake and continuing the production despite Steven's wishes in order to help perpetuate its message, he pushes right past the beneficial part of art's gratia artists and into being unintentionally a massive jerk. The last idea is that if Buck's upbringing is reasonably typical of that of the rest of the people in the Steven Yu universe, then they are educated radically differently than we are in our universe. We learn this from this throwaway line. Remember when you drew this buck? What? You couldn't wait to show it off to all your little Montessori friends. Okay, Dad. Thanks for your help. See you later. Bye. Now, I'm not going to explain what a Montessori education is, link in the doobly-doo, but just to keep everyone on track, Let's just say that it is a radically different type of education than most kids today receive. It is in fact often brought up as a radical alternative to the kindergarten system. Now this is just a shot in the dark, so you know, don't take this too seriously, but I think the case is that the kindergarten that the homeworld gems made on Earth kind of created a bad taste in the mouths of humans for the term kindergarten, or the idea of it, pushing them towards the utilization of a Montessori educational system. Again, just a shot in the dark, but I thought it was worth sharing. Writers don't put words like that into scripts for no reason. And that's what we learned this week on Steven Universe. Join us next time when we talk about the episode Love Letters. I'm Victor Frost, and I'll see you next time on Steven Universe Universe. <laughs>